So don't forget that. I hit it over here. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you making time. I know you're on a tight schedule. You got to head out to the Belgian horse here in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's It's been a busy month. And, yeah. uh, we got a gig to, or I got a gig today. Yeah. In a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate you making time to talk to me. Um, I really love the record and thanks for sending it to me ahead. So, um, is that the order that the, that the songs will be in? Yeah. Um, they should have, did the tracks have a, a, a number in they, front of them? They did. And I think I went in and renumbered them. I can't remember, but I kept them in the order that they came in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I, I can't wait to talk about the record. So, um, but before we do that, uh, how's 2023 going for you so far? It's, uh, it's going all right so far. And, yeah. and thank you. I didn't have a chance to thank you for, uh, for having me on. I really oh, appreciate Yeah, for sure. Appreciate man. the interest. So yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. So 23 has been good so far. Yeah. 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 Been busy with music. Um, I'm a working guy too, so I got a day job and a oh, family. Oh, do you? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I wondered about that. Um, uh, that makes it even a little tougher than, um, I'm getting a bit of that taste right now, not to the level that you're doing it, but you know, being in a band and trying to hold down the day gig and man, it really, in fact, I put the podcast on pause for a little bit because I had a bunch of songs to learn. And I was like, wow, I have a newfound respect for guys that really are out truly doing this. So yeah, it's a lot of work. You guys are playing a lot of gigs too. I saw your schedule. Yeah, we are. I, I don't, my wife said, did you anticipate playing that many shows? And I said, honestly, <laughs> I didn't know. And, and the guys will just go, Hey, everybody good on this day. And I look at the calendar and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. So yeah, it's yeah. been fun. It's been a lot of fun. So nice. Yeah. yeah well, and before we jump into the record, uh, let's, let's just kind of wind back the clock a little bit and, um, just, kind of discover your musical path, if you will. So you bounced, you played, uh, you were in Indy for a while or, or played it around the Indy area, Muncie area, and then you went to Chicago. What took you to Chicago? Uh, we just, uh, we're looking to get out. Um, mm -hmm. I like Chicago a lot. Um, yeah, my wife's got, great town. yeah, my wife got a job up there. Um, mm -hmm. just kind of felt like it was time to, to move on. Um, okay. And how, how long were you there? 11 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we were there. Okay. We just came back in 2019. Um, mm -hmm. And so my first record we put out in Indiana uh, in 2007. And then I did another uh, record in 2012 and mm -hmm. did a string of shows from Chicago to New York, um, played here in town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but, you know, since then, I really didn't play regularly um you know from like 2012 to 2019 and when i moved back here i ended up connecting with cassius goins my old friend and drummer and okay. um we kind of we got the band back together and uh and different uh formations different uh, musicians have been in and out but uh we talked about getting a record going right away mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'd always wanted to go record at postal recording in Indy. So that was kind of always oh, in the yeah. sights. Yeah. Okay. And then COVID yeah. hit and <laughs> yeah, good old COVID. Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything was out for a while. And then, mm -hmm. um, we started in October, 2021, um, working on this thing at postal. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, so along that path, Corey, what, what musical influences stood out to you? back when you started playing and what was there a what, what was it country is it rock all the above what were you listening to yeah um when i was a kid it was a lot of classic rock uh mm. some old country my grandma loved willie nelson uh, mm. so i have a lot of fond willie nelson memories um it was a lot of prime country back then too mm. 90s mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. um you know as i got older um and started, I started playing guitar when I was 10, but I got serious about it when I was probably like 12 or 13. So that was when like Nirvana was hitting big. Um, and that's, that's what I started doing. We were playing grunge, um, had, yeah. had a band with some buddies. We did local battle of the band stuff. Um, 
but even back then when when you know we were into grunge um and nirvana was big and all that um i was really drawn towards like nirvana unplugged and um mm, okay tom petty singer songwriters yeah. yeah yeah so yeah as i got even older you know in my 20s um alt country guys wilco uh justin towns mm-hmm. earl um a lot of people on bloodshot records up in chicago um and that's kind of you know i kind of consider myself a uh an alt country or americana artist okay um, okay with some of that indie rock and alternative stuff still lingering in there sometimes yeah yeah uh are you self-taught on guitar did you take lessons um i took some lessons yeah did you yeah yeah there's a guy uh who plays an indie now uh with uh sarah grain who also works at postal it was funny we made this connection he used to give me guitar lessons when i was a kid his name's uh doug Sauter, really good guitar player in indianapolis okay okay yeah cool cool um, you had mentioned Wilco, uh, and I definitely, I could hear some Wilco, um, in your songwriting. I also, uh, which is, this is probably, uh, very similar, but, um, Jay Farrar from Sunvolt. Of course, those guys, yeah. you know, uh, Tweedy and, and Farrar were together for a while. And I hear there was a couple, uh, things in the record and we'll talk about it that I heard. And I was like, man, that sounds like a, um, a chorus that reminded me of a early Sunvolt. Uh, I don't know their catalog super well, but the early stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, good deal. Um, so was the goal, did you set out thinking I want to front a band or was it just, I'm in a band and, and it just kind of worked out that you ended up being, it's your band and you're the guy out front now. Well, when I was, when I was a teenager, I was just the only one that would do it out of the group. You know, <laughs> it's usually what I hear. Yeah. I, I started singing because somebody had to sing. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah. Okay. And it's funny, man. Like I, uh, I really worked at it over the years and mm. I don't think like even back then, like it, when we were playing in bands and just starting, it was kind of different. Like the vocals were not as out front as mm-hmm. singer songwriter mm-hmm. stuff and things I do now. And Mm-hmm. I started going to open mics on my own after my end of high school band ended in a, a, a you know, a brawl with <laughs> everybody. Uh, oh no, yeah. that's not good. Everybody's all uh-huh. right. Uh, but, um, and I, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a different thing for sure, but I've, I've worked on it a lot over the years since then. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing, um, start to move into, to your new record, all roads home. Um, that's one thing and I made a note of, and I don't know why this hit me this way, and it maybe sounds kind of obvious, but you, it, what came through to me, Corey, was you take songwriting very seriously. You really are working at it. And, uh, and you, you would say, well, most songwriters probably do. I, there was something about, as I went back through the whole catalog, but particularly on this new record, I just thought, man, that, this guy is working at writing some great songs. Thoughts on that? Well, thank you. Um, and I, yeah. I do take it, I do take it serious. Um, and I have actually put probably more work in the past few years than I have ever have before. And I, I've always done this. I've always written, um, you know, since I was little, I've, I've written mm-hmm. songs and poems and stuff. Um, but something that was different this time around was, during um, COVID, like back in spring 2020, uh, one of my mm-hmm. favorite uh, singer-songwriters, Corey Brannon, posted on social media that he was doing lessons, like doing um, mm-hmm. online workshops. And mm-hmm. um, for me, like that was like huge. Like he's one of, you know, he's been one of my favorite artists for a long time. And mm-hmm. okay, um, so I did, I, I, I talked to him. Um, and he was also doing like a series of interviews of his own, um, about songwriting, um, during COVID. So he, he interviewed like Mm -hmm. Jason Isbell, um, Mm. and, and some, a lot of his good, uh, uh, artist friends. So I was Mm -hmm. watching that and then I got to talk to him and, um, you know, really started, probably getting a little more, you know, taking some of the, the meth methods, you know, putting some mm-hmm. actual thought mm-hmm. into, uh, mm-hmm. how I was going about it and, you know, putting, putting some, uh, 
actual tactics into place instead of just kind of, yeah. you know, seeing what happened. Well, yeah, what stood out to me was that, um, and I've been fortunate to talk to a lot of great artists on the podcast. Um, your songs are not, I mean, kind of when you think it's going this way, it'll go this way a little bit. And I love that because it holds, it held my interest. And uh, it just, there's just a lot of color and there's some nuance and texture in all the songs. I just, um, I just really enjoyed the record. Um, and, and, um, and wide variety. You mentioned alt country, uh, Americana. Um, and the thing that struck me on the first five songs, they all are in different buckets. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah. They all just sound so different and, yeah. and collectively, None of the songs sound the same. You know, you can hear an artist and go, well, that song sounds kind of like the first song on the, you know, that I heard and none of that on here. And there's no filler. You got 10 songs here and there's no filler on any of this. So uh, you really cover a wide range. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a, I have a lot of talented friends and family. Mm. I got family on the record. And then I, you know, I also hired some really good musicians. So that, yeah. that helps, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, talk about those players a little bit, who you had on there. Uh, I, of course I recognized Jenny DeVoe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And who else did you have on the record? Um, well, I'll just start with Jenny. Jenny's my aunt. I don't know if we made that connection. Oh, or not. seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, well, that makes sense then. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, so that was really cool. Like I've, uh, I've opened up for her for years, um, you know, and I, I, oh, she's great. Yeah. She's phenomenal. She's, she's so good. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, she was a big part of it. You know, she's, she sings on six songs on the record. Um, he plays auxiliary percussion on one more and, uh, she was a co-producer on it. So she was there through a okay. lot of the sessions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And who else are, are you doing a lot of the lead work? Did you have, did you share that with somebody? Uh, so I, I played all the acoustic on the record and I played, okay. um, a few different electric parts. I like, I play the solo on, I got you, uh, most of the electric you hear on new home in Chicago is me. Um, but any of the real, like really awesome stuff is Paul Holdman who uh okay. i don't know if you're familiar with paul but he is a i'm not he's a really well-known blues guitar player around indie and okay and he's also just he can do anything i mean he's phenomenal uh great guy uh he's played on jenny's records um yeah been a big big part of uh her music in the past too <clears throat> excuse me um so paul was a big presence um then we got jim kermitas on pedal steel uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That it sounds great. Yep. It sounds so good. He's the man. Yeah. He, he was on, is, um, is he a local guy? Originally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's in, um, he bounces around now. I think he's out in. he's got a place in Michigan and in North Carolina. Okay. And he's still got family. I, I think one of his daughters lives in Indy. So he's, he's back okay. fairly often. Okay. Yeah. Jim played on my first record, uh, too. And yeah, he's just awesome. He plays with a lot of people. Yeah. Wow. That, uh, pedal steel's a very unique thing. And to have a great player is, I think they're hard to find, right? I don't know any other pedal steel players. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so did you track everything at postal? We did. Yeah. Yeah, everything was done there. Okay, we, all right. Did did you write? Uh, were these songs? Did you have a collection of songs already, Corey, or did you write specifically for this record? Most of them were written. Um, it's really a mix. Like some of them are really old songs that I just hadn't put mm -hmm. on a record um, okay. previously. Um, some were written, you know, a year within a year of yeah. of the recording. And then okay. um, Don't Come Calling and um, With You All, or Always With You, are um, they were written during the recording process. Okay, okay. Uh, I'd mentioned the texture, uh, just some of the nuance and the things that you did, and I actually have Don't Come Calling teed up. Did you cut that one live? Yeah. 
Did you? Yeah. Because it, the way there was just some things that you did that you don't hear on most records. There was like some distant miking with Jenny's voice. Yeah. Um, even even the amp was a little bit of distant mic. It sounded like you're kind of in a juke joint, you know, kind of. Yeah. You know, it had that feel to it. So and obviously that was on purpose. Uh, talk a little bit about that. I mean, just how do you think? Hey, on this one, we're going to have her vocal in the back a little bit more, not quite up front. Um, well, for that song in particular, I wanted to do that one um, differently than we did the rest of the songs. We mm. we isolated everything for the most part in the other songs, and so I could you know do vocals uh, o- right. overdub later, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This one I, I thought it'd be cool to do live, and I also thought it would be cool to do without telling. Uh, Paul or, or Jenny um, ahead of time about the song, uh, like or showing it to oh, them. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted okay. I wanted it to be a loose, like improvised um, live feel. Uh, okay, because Paul, like Paul, you know, improvises all the time. He's he's a blues mm-hmm. guy, um, mm-hmm. and you know, Jenny's got a lot of blues in her music too. Oh yeah. So yeah. I thought that'd be cool. Uh, I did end up running it by Jenny one time before we went in there, and. Um, my brother as well. That's my brother on harmonica on that song. Okay. Yeah, my okay. brother Shay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. How, so how long were you in uh, recording? How long did it take you to track everything? Uh, a year. Um, now we weren't working on it continuously, but it was about mm-hmm. once a month for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've yet to be, uh, I, I know where that place is at. I'd love to go in there. I don't know if you can just go in and check it out or not, but I see a lot of pictures of it. It's very cool. Yeah, just call t- uh, yeah. call them up. They're they're all great over yeah. there. Yeah, cool. Um, another song, and believe me, we could spend time on every one of these. Uh, you lead off with Sunshine from Blue, um, and I've referred to songs in the past as a radio hit. Uh, that song, it's a great way to start the record. I'm thinking... I'm an old guy, so radio was really important. I, not that it isn't now, but it's there's so many other avenues for music. But that sounds like a radio hit to me. Um, to talk a little bit about that song. Yeah. So that's that was kind of um, why it was first. It seemed like a single. Um, mm-hmm. You know, upbeat. Um, I thought it was kind of a a good introduction to the album. It was kind of a mm-hmm. middle middle of the road for the different types of songs on the record. Mm -hmm. Um, I love uh, road songs, traveling songs, you know, hit the highway songs. Um, So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of imagery from my life and kind of like excitement from those times in my life when I was taken off to go somewhere new. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That song also was inspired though. It was after we moved to Chicago and, um, a friend of mine was uh, taken off on a, on a new part of her life. And um, she, she kind of like most of the imagery for, is from my life, but I use kind of some from hers. And um, mm-hmm. she actually uh, passed away in a car accident a few years back. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's kind of special. I think about her with, with that song sometimes. So, mm-hmm. um, but it's a, it's an up, upbeat, positive one. And I, I thought it was a good it intro. Is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, yeah, definitely. And I think you even referenced windows down in the song. I thought that's a song summer day, just windows down, cranking the song and just cruising down the road. That's a, it's a great song. So, um, wishing well, uh, that's got a really big guitar sound. Yeah. Um, how'd you, how'd you, and I love that space that you create. Um, t- how did you get that sound? I guess what's the guitar, what's the amp? How'd you do that? It's a telly. Um, I don't remember what Paul mm. was playing out of at the time. Paul played out of a couple different Fender combos. One was this mm. really old, cool, um, legit 50s vintage combo amp. Mm. And the, the other was, uh, I don't remember if it was a Princeton, maybe. I can't remember what it was. Mm. But, um, yeah, Paul um, just... he dialed in a uh, a cool tone it's kind of like a, a country kind of a standard kind of country lick sort of but mm-hmm. he put more mm-hmm. of a uh you know a big rock sound on it um yeah. and i think i think when we were in there i was like yeah do more of that like let's not shy away from that yeah. you know 
Yeah. Cause yeah. I love that. A lot of the stuff that I love is, you know, a mix of genres and country and punk or, or rock or yeah, what, whatever, not so much, uh, what you think, of, what a lot of people think of as country these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, I got you, uh, that sounds like a pretty autobiographical song. And, and I, a lot of these songs you can tell you're pulling from your stream of life, but that one sounds particularly autobiographical. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, um, it's funny. It's almost, uh, sometimes I worry it's a little too diary ish, uh, but <laughs> believe it or not, it's, it's not all, um, it's not all verbatim. It's not all legit from yeah my experience, but, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of about, um, you know, drawn from my wife and I's, uh, life over the past 10 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. her mom passed away not long after we moved to Chicago. Um, mm. so yeah, there's, you know, some of that influenced that song. Um, but it's a happy song and, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was real happy with the way it turned out. Yeah. And I, the, the themes that run throughout the record, um, it, it pulls from everyday life. It seems like to me, um, hopes and fears and, and, uh, in the end more hope than fear, I guess, but some fear mixed in just daily struggles and well. maybe even some personal transformation in there. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, I think that's kind of the theme, like, especially cause these songs were written over such a long period of time, uh, and about a long, long period of time. Some of these songs are kind of about, you know, things that span a long period of time. Um, that's kind of where I think, you know, the, the title of the record comes in. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's about, it's about different paths and different time periods and, um, yeah, for sure. For, there's transformation in there. Yeah. 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 Cool. What, um, as far as songwriting are, are, did you write all of these by yourself? Do you do some co-writing? What's your process like? Uh, not a lot of co-writing. No. Um, okay. you know, I definitely had, had help on the production side. Um, but the, the, I, I'm the songwriter on the songs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, Gosh, what favorites of yours from the record? Um, uh, it changes all the time, um, which I'm, <laughs> which I'm, I'm happy about, you know, it's like, yeah. Um, there's not anything that I, you know, I'm super annoyed with yet or anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple more songs I'll reference. Cause like I said, I've, I've literally, I've got them all here in front of me. We could talk about them all day. Cause I, I, I was blown away when, when you sent it to me and I was like, I started listening. This is really good. Oh, All you. that I need. Yeah. I know there, that Southwestern sound. I'm not quite sure. I know there's a term for that. I just kept thinking kind of that Tex-Mex Southwest big twangy sound. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Talk about that, that song. And, and do you picture it that way when you're writing it or does it kind of morph into that or? So that's the only song I've kind of written in that vein, really. And it's mm -hmm. actually, um, I think it's like technically a bolero, which is like Cuban, the rhythm. Okay. And okay. Um, I wrote that song after, like right after I got back from that string of shows out to New York in 2012. Okay. And okay. when I was out there, I mm -hmm. stayed with my wife's cousins in New Jersey. And okay. they got me into uh, Dexter. I don't know if you've ever watched Dexter. Um, I've, I'm familiar with the show. I've not watched it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it takes place in Miami and there's a lot of Cuban music, uh, in Miami, I think in the show. And I think that might be where that came from. Like I yeah. kind of wrote it right after that. Um, so I, yeah. I think that, and then like Tom Waits, um, I'm a, yeah. I'm a Tom Waits fan, um, especially the oh, album, yeah. uh, rain dogs. And, um, yeah, more recently I've been listening to real gone a lot, but, mm. um, there's uh, some of that in his music too. Um, okay. I think his guitar, the guitar player on that record, Mark Rebo. I don't know if I'm yeah. saying that right. Rebo. Rebo. Mark Rebo, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got a friend that loves Mark Rebo. Yeah. So I hear about Mark Rebo all the time. So I think he's real yeah. big into Cuban music, if I'm not mistaken. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that's where that started. And then um, 
we hired um, Josh Silbert, um, who's a great saxophone player around Indy, um, to do the horn arrangements. And he added that like heavy Tex-Mex um, horn texture, especially like in, mm-hmm. in the choruses. Um, and it really fits, I think, especially like when... Oh, it fits real well. Yeah. yeah. Like if you look at the rest of my music in the country element, um, it was a really cool way to tie things together. Um, and then I kind of asked him for those, uh, hits in the verses on the, um, you know, the short burst horn bursts, uh, mm-hmm. in the verses. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of Tom Waits ish. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and not to peek too far behind the curtain, Corey, but there's probably a lot of cost in making this record or a record, right? If you're going to do it well, there's a lot of cost in it. Yeah. So you kind of know that going in. And I, I think about um, the way the music industry is today and how artists get compensated. Um, I mean, in the end, does it, you're, you're out just cranking out shows. That's how you make the money, right? So you, you probably go in the hole making the, the album and, but it's, you know, it's a love. You you want to do it. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Cause I think the average fan has no idea what, and I probably don't either, honestly, but just what goes into it, the cost, the, all of that, uh, cause it's not free. So absolutely talk a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one reason we did it over the span of a year. Um, mm-hmm. so I could spread out the, so I could pay for it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah, you got to pay the studio. Um, you know, if you're hiring musicians, you have to pay the musicians. Um, and it, uh, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can plan for it. But I'd, I'd like to think at, at this point, I know a little bit, but still a lot of unplanned, you know, yeah. you can't plan for everything. You don't know exactly how every session is going to go. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, you know, like you said, I, I do it because uh, I love it. Um mm-hmm. I did, you know, really want to um, do something good, you know, do it well. Um, and that, yeah. you know, so I tried, uh, I knew going into it, it was going to be a big undertaking. Um, we recorded to analog tape. That's what they do at Postal. So seriously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which, which adds probably more cost. <laughs> it's, it takes a little more time you know? Yeah. Cause you, okay. you can't jump around as much in the editing. I mean, we eventually dump to digital and edit in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. digital, but it was recorded to, uh, to tape, which is one of the reasons, you know, you asked if we tracked all at postal. Um, mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons we had to do it all there is, you know, cause not everywhere has tape. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the artists that I've talked to when I asked that question, they're like, Oh, it's digital tapes too expensive. And it's probably, a rarity these days. I don't know. Maybe the big studios probably still have it, but, um, but yeah, that's cool that you recorded the tape. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we thought so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, just a random thought. I saw you at the Belgian. Um, I, and I think I told you when we were, uh, communicating back and forth, I, I don't know if it was last year or somebody before last and you had Charlie Ballantyne with you Yeah, playing. Yeah. Are you friends with Charlie? What's that? What's that connection? I met Charlie through my buddy Cassius, who plays drums. Um, okay. And Cassius and I grew up together. He's a professor of mm-hmm. uh, jazz at Ball State, and Charlie's a jazz guy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cassius uh, helped bring those guys in. Okay. All right. So do you still run cross paths with Charlie at all? Or um... No, nah, he actually moved. No. <clears throat> oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So he's not, is he in Indiana, Indy, or where's, where's he located? I think he's in DC. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he's back through, but no, we're not, we're not really in touch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one other song I wanted to touch on, uh, part-time heart. Um, I, that song, we probably all have either been that person or know someone in our life that is that person. Just how did that one come about? Hard time, hard. Um, well, musically, I like to talk about this one because it's um, uh, Travis picking, which I did on a few songs on the record. So, mm-hmm. you know, the thumbs doing the bass line the whole time and yeah. the other fingers are doing melodies and strumming. 
And I didn't play like that at all um, before doing those uh, workshops with uh, Corey Brand, and I kind of picked all that up from there. So okay. I'm kind of kind of proud to you know after playing guitar for you know 25, 30 years to pick up something new that I've loved. It in, That's in, impressive. Yeah, it's fun to you got to keep yeah. learning. You know, that's yeah. yeah. Um, well, and this sing at the same time, I, I, I'm so impressed with guys that can finger pick and sing at the same time. Did that take you a while to get used to that part of it? So, A, you got to learn to Travis pick and then B, then you got to sing over that. So you're doing, you know, a lot there. Was that, did it take a while? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm laughing because like I've played a lot uh, solo acoustic over the years and um, you can misbehave when you do that. You don't have to stay in time. Uh, oh, right. You don't have to memorize your yeah. chord changes as well. You should maybe. But yeah. Um, yeah. so you play with a band. Right. And then you've got to work within these constraints and not yeah. not mess up. And then you go to yeah. a studio and you play to a click. And mm. and that's I mean, I think I think we I got. I shaped up, but, um, you know, not, not, <laughs> not doing that for a while. It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. I don't know if you play to a click yeah. much, but for me, it was a challenge. No, no, no. I've never, never played to a click. So yeah, yeah that's, that's impressive then. Yeah. That's uh so it, is there a backstory to that or just again, pulling from the stream of life, just, uh, where you've kind of had that experience. Part part-time heart is, um, it's about some things that I've struggled with in life. And mm. for this mm. song, like um, in particular, I, I almost feel like it's important not to say specifically what those things are, because I think, sure. I think, yeah. I think this translates to a lot of people's lives and mm -hmm. it does. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's about, yeah. you know, not, not living how you want to or how you should because of, mm -hmm you know, a fear for some reason, or maybe, you know, you're, you're doing things for somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how that affects you over time and, and kind of what the effects are, you know, the positive effects of letting yeah. go and doing that. And then also some of the negative effects, you know, of, of what mm -hmm. you have to face when you, when you do let go and, and start, you know, not, mm -hmm. not doing that. I don't know if right, that made sense. Right. Yeah, it does. It does. Well, and, and there is, um, I think a lot of songwriters also say, you know, I don't want to give away too much because it, it really, in the end, you put the song out there and then it takes on its meaning to the listener. So, and they yeah. form their own uh, scenario around it or scene or their narrative around that. So, yeah, it's a great song. It's a beautifully sad song. I, I really, I like that song. So. Thank you. Um, let's jump. Yeah, let's jump to your live performance um, approach. Do you have, is there a, a goal for how many shows you play in a year? Or do you look at it in that term? Uh, like, hey, I'd like to play this many shows this year. No. Um, you know, when when I moved back to Indiana in 2019 and started playing with Cassius again, um, I was just really excited to be playing with him and, and the other talented guys, you know, he kind of mm -hmm. uh, brought into the group. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, like I said, we kind of immediately started talking about a record or recording. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was actually a planned record in the beginning. Um, and then, yeah, there was COVID and then, then we started, you know, really delving into the recording. And that's what I've been focused on for the past couple of years. I've been playing shows um, still, but more focused on the mm -hmm. recording. And now um, I'm really trying to figure out what I want to do with shows and mm -hmm. um, what I want to do, you know, with getting the music heard. Uh, so mm -hmm. I've, I'm being really active on social media right now. Um, mm -hmm. We're, we're pressing vinyl. I'm trying to let people know about that. Uh, I would like to get out. I'd like to get back up to Chicago and, and play some shows. Uh, my old stomping grounds up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like, yeah. like to get out, you know, to some different regions. And then um, right now we're trying to let everybody know about the Jazz Kitchen show on September 6th. Yeah, let's talk about that. I've got that teed up here. That's, um, that's a pretty special place to be playing. Uh, and I'm, I've got a couple tickets, so I'll be there. Awesome. Um, 
Yeah, but how how did that come about? Um, and are you booking your own shows? You have someone doing that? Because like I said, that's a pretty special place to be. Yeah, um, I book. Yeah, I book my own shows. Um, you know, okay. Cassius, um, Cassius kind of set got the ball rolling there. Um, he he, re- mm-hmm. you know, he he reaches out and does, um, you know, makes connections for the shows as well. Uh, and then, um, you know, Jenny plays there a, a lot. Paul Holden, the mm-hmm. guitar player, Cassius, everybody in the band plays there a lot. So, mm-hmm. um, okay. I think it's just kind of a uh, it it's makes sense for the event i think and and i'm mm-hmm. and yeah really excited about playing there and and that's your album release show right yeah 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 very good yeah i look forward to that um have you been have you been playing these songs a while live um or or have you kind of been holding back to for the release um some of them i've definitely played for a while live Mm -hmm. um i haven't been holding back this summer no we've been playing them this summer um trying to you know trying to get uh as much awareness as i can for the record and the music yeah yeah are the song have you over the course of playing them have they have they changed course at all are they pretty much what's on the record you know i you get out and start playing something after a while you might go hey let's change this let's do that oh yeah it changes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. That's the Bob Dylan approach. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always so. had a lot of improv in my um, shows and my songs too. Okay. And, and I, you know, sometimes I use a loop station. I don't do that as much anymore, but uh, okay. when I play solo, I do that. And then mm-hmm. there's always jam, jam sessions in our live shows. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, so as far as your shows, is it, how, how many are, have tended to be solo versus a full band? And then what's the plan going forward? Um, well, there was definitely a lot of years where I played more solo shows than band shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, lately I'd say it's a pretty even split, maybe even a a few more band shows. Um, okay. And then going forward, um, I anticipate a mix of both. Uh, it kind of depends on, you know, how much trouble the guys are, are willing to get in with me, you know, uh, yeah. if, they're, if they're willing yeah. to go out of town and, um, all that good stuff. Cause it's harder to make money. Um, at least for me in this stage, like out of town, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've got, I've got people that'll come out to see me, um, mm-hmm. around here in Indy. Um, but I don't have a strong presence maybe you know up in chicago but outside of that um you know not going to be a lot of money in it really Mm -hmm. do you pull from all your catalog when you're playing uh yeah like like the early like the early stuff your your first two releases you're pulling from that yeah yeah play the old stuff for sure yeah yeah cool cool okay um when you're not playing music what do you do for fun uh, I'm a dad. I'm a family man. I've got an eight year old and a six year old boy or eight and six year old boys. Um, okay. And yeah, so we do uh, all kinds of stuff with them. My wife, Jennifer, um, and I, uh, so they're in sports and all that good stuff. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, We're music lovers. We like to get out to shows. Um, she, my wife's a big foodie, so you know, we cook. Oh, and, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. She cooks. I, okay. I help a little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, have you taken in any good shows this year? Who have you seen that you've liked, or 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 are you going to some good shows? No, we we wanted to see several lately, but we didn't make happen. We wanted yeah. to see Band of Horses. Um, mm. Didn't get to to see them. Um, Wanted to get to Farm Aid, but man, tickets are outrageous for for oh, everything. That's crazy, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got tickets to see Springsteen uh, next month over in Columbus. Awesome, and uh, yeah, I splurged on that. I've seen him a few times, and I thought, you know, he may this may be it for him. I, I hope not, but I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pony up the money and go. So, looking forward to that. And um, and then Bourbon and Beyond. Are you familiar with that festival? No, down in Louisville. Yeah, it's a big, uh, big festival. I think they've done it uh, 
uh, this is probably the fifth year, maybe the sixth year. Uh, Bruno Mars is headlining uh, on Sunday, the Black Key. I mean, it's just okay. four days of just big, big name bands. So uh, that's a really uh, that's a really fun festival. Do you get involved in music festivals at all? Have you played any of those? No, I should. That's that's something I've mm-hmm. I've kind of wanted to do. But um, you know, the past few years it's just been local gigs. Um, sure. Around here, so yeah. With with this record, I, I would I would like to uh, try to branch out and um, you know get into some festivals for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm jealous yeah. you're going to go see Bruce. Um, oh yeah, have you seen him before? I have not, but I I would yeah. definitely like to. I I'll be kicking myself if uh, if he would retire. Yeah, I hope not. I hope he keeps going. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to. It. I've not seen this. Uh, incarnation of the band. The last time I saw him was on the Rising Tour, and uh, which was a phenomenal record. But that's been so long ago. And I first, I'm, I'm going to date myself now. The first time I saw him was in '85 at the Hoosier Dome. Did you really? On Born in Yeah, Born in the USA tour, and he had been through Indy, and he played Market Square when it was still around, and then that album blew up, and then he his tour I think just went on, and he came back around and played the Dome, the Hoosier Dome. And it was packed and just, I mean, it was just a phenomenal show. So, um, he's well worth it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm stating the obvious, but just an absolute force of nature when he's, when he's playing. Oh yeah. Especially that band. The band is so good. Yep. It's so good. I would. Yeah. So. I love it. He's a, he's a beast in, in every department, man. Awesome guitar player. Yeah. He, he's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. So he plays a telly. You're a telly guy. I see you play some acoustic. Is that? Uh, do you play more electric or more acoustic? More. Ac- of course, the solo shows you're doing acoustic, but yeah. Yeah, uh, more acoustic. I, I'm playing. Yeah. You know, more electric uh, as I get to play with the band, obviously. So I mm-hmm. I enjoy it, but more acoustic. Yeah. What what kind of acoustic guitar do you have? Uh so this one behind me is my main guitar right now and that is an epiphone aj45 so okay you know kind of a gibson j45 uh sure epiphone version affordable version yeah the affordable yeah one of one day one day we'll do that uh yeah j45 um and then i've got a uh a wector traditional have you ever heard of uh wector guitars Mm -mm. abraham wector Mm -mm. he was Uh -uh. he worked for gibson at one point and um, then he had his own shop in Michigan. I think he's actually from like Fort Wayne. He might have had a shop in Fort Wayne too. Okay. Uh, but he had a popular model. His most popular model was uh, called a Pathmaker, if I remember right. And it was an acoustic okay. shaped like an SG. So it was kind of weird. You know, it had the, the two. That is interesting. Yeah. 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 When I've seen uh, some of your video of you, when you play electric, uh, you, you're playing through a Vox amp. Yeah. Is that an AC 10, AC 15? 15. Yep. 15. Yeah. Those things are, they're great amps. Boy, they're heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kudos to you for lugging it around. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm bringing the PA to a lot of these. Like we had, I, are you really? Yeah. I rented uh 15 or 18 inch subs for the last one out of Tunney. And, uh, oh, wow. Oh, man. I had help, you know, getting them in and out of the truck, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the st- that's the stuff nobody sees, too. You know, all that, all the roadie work you got to do to get set up. And, uh, yep. yeah. Yeah. I, um, I started playing through a, uh, the Fender Deluxe Tone Master. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. It's, uh, it's their digital, it's Fender's digital version of, uh, of the deluxe reverb. Oh, okay. And it weighs no, like not. 23 pounds. That's so, cheating. You're cheating. Yeah. You're cheating. I'm <laughs> totally cheating. I'm totally cheating. And it sounds great. I, you know, there's the old, the tube versus solid state or digital, but they've done a nice job of knocking off that sound. And, um, I, I really, I like it and I love that it doesn't weigh very much. Yeah. So, yeah. Even yeah. my pedal board have, is massive. I need, like, I, I, I might it, go to the digital dark side sometime i'm not there yet but i might yeah do you have a do you have an always on pedal when you're playing electric is there something you just go man this is i gotta have this one on most of the time no nope i uh i've actually stopped using most of my pedals um i'm usually yeah i'm usually just going with that uh vox overdrive 
Um, I'll use okay. like I'll I'll use um, a digital uh, delay, um, the Canyon mm-hmm. from Electro Harmonics for like slapback. Um, mm, yeah, but most of the time my my overdrive straight from the amp. Okay, good. That keeps it simple. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, hey, we'll wrap up. I know you got things to do. Um, who who are you listening to? Uh, what what leave us with somebody to go? Hey, you need to check this band out, or here's somebody that's that I just you know I find myself listening to a lot. Uh, the new Isbel album is really good. <laughs> um, He's so solid. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair. Yep. How good he is. Yep. Yeah. Great guitar player too. Um, oh yeah. That, yeah. that's what's been on i'm i'm always listening to a lot of justin towns earl um we just okay. kind of came up on the three-year anniversary of his, his passing so i've been listening yeah. to him a little bit more yeah 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 but that that new jason yeah. album is uh is great yeah were you uh were you into jason when he was with the drive-by truckers you know what um I was not actually like I, I've listened mm-hmm. to them, um, you know, here and there, but never got real, mm-hmm. real into the truckers. I feel like it's one of those groups I should revisit because I would probably really like them. You know, I kind of had that experience too, Corey. I, I listened to the records. I'm like, I like them. And then I've seen them live and it took on a whole, as many bands do, it took on a whole new feel. I'm like, Oh my gosh, these guys, I'd saw them after Jason. Um, but I was like, these guys just come out and bring it. And it's just, it's just authentic. Yeah. That's what it, it's authentic music and they're just great songs too. So yeah. A quick story about Jason. My wife and I, um, went to see Ryan Adams over in Cincinnati. This is, we weren't married yet. Um, this has been oh gosh, six, seven, eight years ago. And Jason opened for him. I think it might have been right after he had left the truckers. I'm not sure, not long after. And he came out and he was acoustic. Then Ryan ended up playing an acoustic show too. But I didn't, I didn't know of Jason Isbell. And he came out and like, oh my god, this guy. The voice is great. The songs are great. So I quickly got up to speed on him. So yeah, but I'd never heard of him. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what's the rest of 2023 look like for you? Of course, promoting the album and, and what else is on the horizon? Um, I'll just, uh, working and taking care of kids, man, outside of the record. (laughs) Um, but the records have me pretty busy. Um, it's, you know, Mm -hmm. it's been a lot of work and, um, now I'd like to play some, some shows and get out there and share with people. So, yeah. Yeah. Which I really What's appreciate up? you having me on. Um, Absolutely, man. Yeah. To talk Thanks about for it. Being willing to do it. Yeah.